Hi, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. It's review day! Today I'm going to review the Western Mountaineering Antelope Microfiber Sleeping Bag. Is this best, the best possible lightweight expedition bag out there? Let's find out! The ultralight antelope western mountaineering microfiber sleeping bag. That's, that's like a mouthful to say. This sleeping bag is super, super good. When you're looking at the spectrum of options for a lightweight expedition sleeping bag, you have tons of choices. North Face, Feathered Friends, Big Agnes, Western Mountaineering, uh, out, I don't know if Outdoor Research makes them. There's, there's like a ton of companies and then some other, uh, I wouldn't say off-brand, but lesser known names. I've trusted my life to Western Mountaineering for whew, over two decades. Now, that, that said, I do not receive any financial compensation from Western Mountaineering. They don't send me free sleeping bags for these reviews, so I'm just reviewing products that I know, like, and trust, so that way I can give you an honest review. And while we're at that, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Subscribe so you can receive motivational tidbits, travel information, and product reviews that you might be interested in. So why do I like the Western Mountaineering Antelope Sleeping Bag? I'll just call it the bag from now on. Uh, from my lightweight expeditions. This thing is incredible. It squashes down to just a tiny little pack and it has served me incredibly well. It served me in snowstorms and the Sierras and the Rocky Mountains and I even took this bag to the Arctic in early fall with me in Greenland. It probably wasn't the best choice but it totally worked. This bag is rated to five degrees Fahrenheit so that's well below freezing. That's like 25 or so degrees below freezing. So you can get pretty cold when it's five degrees. Now that said, this there are two ratings for bags. One is for comfort and one is for survival. The nice thing about Western Mountaineering's ratings is they are for comfort. And this is a hard thing to find out. When you look at bag ratings, you say, oh, it's a five degree bag. That might be rated for survival, so it could be five degrees and you're going to freeze your keister off. So just be careful, look at the information on the bags and try and find that. The nice thing about Western Mountaineering, it's five degrees comfort. In Greenland, I was probably camping in minus 20 or colder, I mean it was really cold. I was chilly, but I, I made it. Other days were pretty warm. It was in the low teens, so I had no problems. I've taken this bag down to minus 20. Uh, in Wyoming, it was almost minus 30 degrees. I got caught out when the temperature dropped and an unexpected clear night came through. I was pretty cold, but you know, it, it totally worked. I wasn't totally happy, but it worked. I don't recommend ever taking that risk of taking a bag lighter than you should, but sometimes Things just happen. So what do I like about the antelope sleeping bag? The Western Mountaineering has two options. One is a microfiber fabric, which is a very, very light fabric. It is, shall we say, water shedding. Eh, kind of, sort of. And then the other version is the Gore Windstopper. It's a Gore fabric. Uh, the reason I chose the wind stopper, or the, I mean the, the microfiber for this one, is just so the bag can be extra light. If I need the Gore wind stop, I'm going to step it up to my uh, Western Mountaineering Puma in that bag over there because I know it's going to be pretty hardcore. But boy, this bag really packs down. So what I'm going to do is show you that I'm six feet tall and I bought this six foot six bag. If you were, uh, I think the, the middle rating is five six. If you're taller than five foot six, maybe five eight, you definitely want to get the bigger bag simply because you'll be able to wrap the head completely around your head, snug that sucker down, and you will be toasty. Now you can see the zipper here zips almost all the way length down. I've got a left zipper on this guy, and it has a dual zipper, so if you need to unzip from the bottom, if you can, to cool off your feet a bit, you certainly can do that. I almost never use that feature. I don't really care about it, but that's okay. So you can see I can fit in this guy. I'm six feet tall. Hey, what's down there? Oh, hey, check it out. Compression sack. 
I'm gonna uh, zip this guy down and just show you what it's like to be in one of these sleeping bags. Now already I can feel the warmth. It's already getting too hot for me. It's like, whew, because it's about 65 in the room and I'm in this five degree sleeping bag. It's like, oh. And you'll notice I like to zip from the outside. It's a little bit easier. So you can see here that it's six feet tall. I still have plenty of room. So six foot six, it completely works. Now you might say that's kind of silly. Why didn't you get a six foot bag? Simply because when it's really cold, I like to pull this over my head. I pull the drawstring down. Let's see if you can see that. And I get this thing. So I have just got this little breathing hole. Now, if you're claustrophobic, you will not like this experience because mummy bags are designed, maybe not like a mummy coffin, but to keep you super warm. I'm already like broiling. So, whew. That's uh, something to consider. If you're doing serious expeditions, I wouldn't say you can't bring a rectangular bag, but nobody brings a rectangular bag. So this bag design is super nice. And I'll show you some of the features here. Let me get myself out before I pass out from heat. Whew. Oh yeah. Get out of that bag there. Ah. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I want to show you since it's happening here, this down's probably too far out, but you can actually try and pull, yeah, this is too far out. Sometimes you can actually pull the down back in by holding from the other side and pinching. This one's probably too far out. Oh, hey, check it out. Woohoo! I was able to recover and suck the down back into the bag. That's a secret trick is pinch and pull from the other side. So why does this make, uh, why is this called an expedition bag? Well for a couple of reasons. One, there's this big, what's called a baffle. This here adds insulation. When you close the zipper up, let me close the zipper all the way up. Shoom. Okay. You can see that this baffle here actually, let's see, hopefully it's uh, exposed, right? This baffle here prevents the zipper from letting all the heat out of your bag. That's a very nice feature. Not all bags have that. They've got all this super tech, but they don't have the baffle down the side. I mean, I, I can, here, I'll pull it out and you can see this really poofy sort of piece that ends up going over the zipper. That makes all the difference. I have had bags without a baffle along the zipper. Freeze fest. You don't want that. So if you think you're gonna do some real cold camping, where it justifies the Western Mountaineering Antelope or some other five degree or below bag, make sure to get a baffle. Even the Western Mountaineering Ultralight and Megalite and all those guys, the, the summer bags, they have the baffle. That is one of the differences that, what, in my opinion, that makes Western Mountaineering better than anybody else. But the Expedition bags also come with another feature. They have the neck baffle. Now, again, if you're claustrophobic, you're gonna hate this. But when it's super freaking freezing, the only way to totally stay warm is to actually close the bag around your neck and use the hood to close that around. And that prevents all the cold air from rushing into your body. It does take getting used to, but when you've got that feature, you think, man, how did I survive without this? Because with that, you can actually use a slightly lighter bag and get away with stuff. So the neck baffle, what that does is, so uh, I don't wanna unzip it, but, You'll see in here, it's got this extra Velcro deal where you Velcro the inside of the bag to itself. Let's see, let me flip that over here. Yeah, there we go. And you attach the Velcro here and the inside neck section of the bag actually closes up. And there you go. And now the inside of the bag is pretty closed up. I mean, that, that's, I wouldn't say your neck diameter, pretty close, but notice you've got this whole hood area. So inside the bag, you've got this completely enclosed uh, body area, and then you've got this hood area where then you can, you know, you Velcro it here to keep the freezing zipper off your face, and then you scooch this thing down to where you're just, you've got this tiny little breathing porthole. And that's what makes this an expedition sleeping bag is the ability to close in the neck baffle, draw that in, draw the hood. And I know it's super freezing. It's a little <laughs> like, Ooh, but it's not a big deal. You can get out of the bag easy. 
you just pull the drawstring, open this up, pull the drawstring here. This is a bungee style cord, so it does have a little bit of flex. So if you get wrapped up, it's, you know, kill yourself choking. And then you open that up. And that, that's what makes this an expedition sleeping bag is that extra baffle there. The hood area is super generous here. You can actually order this bag with either an overfill or an extra uh, down in the foot box, one or the other. So that is another option as well. So let me, uh, this review is going to go a little bit long, but I'll show you. See, this is the extra sized event. Uh, the, how many liters is this? I don't know. Hmm. Oh, wait, here. This is the medium, oops, cut my head off. This is the medium event uh, compression sack. I'll put a link below to this, but I just want to show you how small, I mean, this bag is huge. It's like the size of my body and then some. But this, again, kept me warm in Greenland, in deep snow, in storms, and, you know, no problem. One of the keys is I always stuff the sleeping bag foot down, and I begin stuffing that in there. And as the bag airs up, it actually pushes the air out of the head area, which makes it much easier. If you try and stuff the bag the other way, believe me, it doesn't work. You will swear up and down, you'll fight it, or you'll just take it out of the foot area and go like that. All right. And you can see it's a little bit of a process to mush this in here because it's so lofty that Northern European goose down expands a lot so you gotta mush this thing in here quite a bit but you can see that this bag compresses down quite a bit and you can mush it in there and then so that that's, that's pretty sizable but one of the tricks i use is i do this little chest compression thing down here and I'll, I'll do a separate review of this compression sack but uh you can mush that down there Squish this down, roll it around. And now you've got a waterproof container for your sleeping bag. Now, how much does the antelope weigh? Oh, this is kind of messed up, but I'll, I'll show you real quick. Uh, let me get my handy dandy scale out here. We'll turn that on. So this sack weighs seven ounces. I'm gonna put the sleeping bag on here. So it's three pounds, one ounces. So that's about two and that's about two and a half pounds and two and a two and a half pound sleeping bag will take you down to five degrees comfortably but i've been down to minus 20 minus 25. it wasn't great but it definitely works so this western mountaineering uh, antelope sleeping bag is incredible one other thing is they do uh, western mountaineering sells it with this huge old uh, laundry sack that's what you actually store your sleeping bag in to protect the down. You under no circumstances want to long-term store your sleeping bag in a compression sack because over time, the down can break down. That sounds kind of weird. It happens. So what you do is, yeah, you just simply pull it out of this guy. You suck it out and just gently pull. If you pull really hard, microfiber, uh, fabric is tough, but it's not invincible, but it's ultra light and that's your trade. So instead of storing it there, you simply store it in this crazy huge laundry sack. You just stuff it in here very gently. No problem. And, and for the laundry sack, it doesn't matter what direction you stuff it in here. And we're going to keep going. And each of these laundry sacks for the different Western Mountaineering bags is a different size. And you'll see that the bag is not squashed at all closes up very nice and you can hang it or whatever. If you live in a moist environment like in Washington, Oregon, or uh, New England, or uh, I guess the South too, you don't want to store this bag in your garage if at all possible, simply because that humidity will get into the down and it can mold and you will ruin a very expensive sleeping bag. Check out the link, click below. You'll see just how expensive these are. Now, you're thinking, man, Aaron, why would I spend that much money? If you're in the middle of Greenland and you're, you're freezing and you've got like a week of trekking to do and you're freezing, you will hand your credit card over and say, please end it. So believe me, you want to get a great bag. Do not scrimp and save money. If you think, hey, you know, that's too expensive, but that's what I really want. Believe me, just wait, save your money. 
and get the best bag you can get. So the Western Mountaineering Antelope, uh, one thumb up, two thumbs up. I've used it in Greenland, I've used it in the Arctic. Oh, well, the Arctic is Greenland, or the Greenland is Arctic, hey, whatever. <laughs> I've used it in Yellowstone in the winter, Rocky, Sierras, uh, all these freaking freezing places down to zero degrees and no problem. So my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and motivational speaker. Please like and comment on my channel. Hit that little arrow to the right of the video. Scroll down and leave a comment. Also, please subscribe to my channel and you'll get more updates and reviews just like this. And also support my channel on Venmo, PayPal, and Patreon. Thank you very much for watching.